Hi, this is Lucien, DH7LM and welcome back to Ham Radio Soul. Today I'd like to talk about this little guy here, the Yaesu FT817, nowadays also known as FT818. You might be wondering whether it's still a good idea to buy this little radio, given that it's quite old now. So let's look at some of the pros and cons. First, I must say I had lots and lots of fun with this little radio. Really, it's been great. I've operated stationary mobile, portable, holiday style, used all kinds of antennas and it's, it's been a great experience, really. So, yeah, I'm a bit biased maybe, but I really love this thing. And I know that many, many hams do as well. It's, it's really a popular radio. And I think it has also something to do with the look and feel of this thing, you know. It's, it's not a toy, it, it's real rugged, it feels like a real radio. It's just fun, really. I think that's the reason why it's so popular. That being said, I think this transceiver is really something for having fun not necessarily for winning contests. Which brings us to the negative aspects of this little radio. First of all, the receiver isn't that great. Many people will tell you this and I kind of agree. It's not a world-class receiver, really. But then again, if you turn down the RF gain, which I show in another video that I put a link in the show notes, then it really isn't that shabby at all. And you can also enable the IPO and the attenuator. It will really help, especially on the lower bands, because one problem with this is that the RF gain is kind of too high if you don't reduce it. So the AGC circuit will go crazy and it will be kind of noisy and all of that. So if you reduce that, then it's really not that bad. Another thing that some people complain about is the power drain. I think it's kind of like 300 milliwatts or something in receive, which isn't that bad either, but there are more expensive rigs nowadays like the Allocraft KX2 and KX3 that are better in that regard. Still another issue is the power level. Obviously, this is a QRP rig, so you're limited to 5 watts. And to be honest, on SSB, this is kind of the limit. You will make contacts, of course, and especially if you have a good antenna. But 5 watts for voice... Uh. But then again, if you look at other rigs that have maybe a little more output, like the Allocraft radios that I think have like 10 watts out, it's not a big difference, really. If you remember, you need four times the power to achieve one S unit more on the receiving end. So the difference between 5 and 10 watts, it's really barely noticeable. So that's not really an issue. The issue with this radio is not, I think, the power level, but the modulation. With a stock mic you just don't have a lot of talk power. It's kind of weak so don't hesitate to crank up the SSB gain. You'll find it in the menu. Put it on 100 and even then it's really not that great. So one trick to really make this radio shine is to buy another microphone. Maybe one with a, a, a little amplifier so that will make a huge difference. There are even accessories that you can buy where you can plug in the stock microphone and it has like a speech compressor and all of that. And this will make a huge difference. You can also buy like an old CB microphone or something like this one that I bought. And this really makes a huge difference. And you can even do mods. I have another video about this that I link to in the show notes. Which brings us to another really great thing about this radio. There are tons and tons of mods that you can find online and it's really a great radio to mess around with. Especially if you buy it on the used market and you don't spend too much money on it. 
it's really fun to to mod it and to add stuff and to tinker a, a bit with it because uh, I think many hams are kind of reluctant to modify their radios if they cost big bucks so this is less an issue with this thing and uh, it's it's really very f worth it and tons of fun to modify the Yaesu FT817. Another really great thing about this radio is that it has 2 meter and 70 centimeter capabilities uh, including SSB so you can do weak signal work on VHF UHF and this is actually really amazing so if you take out the radio to do some portable operation maybe on a on a mountain or on a hilltop or something it's really fun to to use the the weak signal modes on VHF UHF be it in CW or in SSB this is really really cool and I don't think many radios have this capability so this makes the FD817 kind of unique so that's really a great asset don't underestimate it I also think that this radio makes for a great first transceiver if you are a new ham because first of all it's not that expensive and I think you have tons of fun with it you it's great for learning you know it's it's not really plug and play you have to you know add an antenna and all that it's not like if you buy a like a Baofeng or something you have to put some effort into it which makes it a great learning experience it sure did for me so I think it's it's really a good investment as a, as a first radio and I know so many hams who really love it even those who have tons of other expensive radios and chances are you'll always keep it you will always use it because it's such a great radio another thing is that it's already a classic so that means you can probably always resell it and get a reasonable price for it because it's just adored by so many people and uh, yeah as I said it, it's already a classic radio so if you buy it on the used market for example chances are you can resell it for exactly the same price so it's not not a big risk to to buy one of these so what's my conclusion well as you already guessed I'm a huge fan of the FT817 or the FT818 for that matter as I understand there's basically no difference at all between the two so I would definitely buy it again especially if you buy it on the used markets for like 300 or 400 bucks that's really great now would I buy the FT818 new right now it's a bit tougher but uh, I still think it's great value I think it's about 600 bucks maybe something like that so I, I think it's still very worth it although of course you will have alternatives at that price level right so that's really up to you but I, I still think uh, even though the, the, the design is old and and with all the flaws that I already addressed uh, I still think it's it's good value so FT817 818 still going strong definitely recommend it thanks for watching I hope you got something out of it and if you like the video consider subscribing and see you next time 73s bye bye